At the heart of Kenya's Rift Valley lies the Lake Naivasha Basin, one of the major Ramsar sites in the world. It extends over 3,400 square kilometers and is endowed with rich biodiversity, spectacular landscapes and gushing geothermal springs. The basin's floriculture industry, tourism, small-scale farming and rapid urban development continue to exert immense pressure on its water and forest resources. Communities in the upper reaches of the landscape are predominantly smallholder farmers who are yet to wholly embrace appropriate land use practices. Their farming practices are contributing to their own impoverishment and to the degradation of water quality and quantity which is affecting downstream inhabitants, including the economically important flower firms. Water is a major source of conflict in the basin, with illegal over-abstraction to support agriculture and horticulture as the main threats to water reserve. Degradation of forests was widespread and a major concern to many stakeholders, especially the conservationists. Following a major drought in 2009, the lake levels drastically receded and the basin future looked bleak. To ensure long-term sustainable development in the Lake Naivasha Basin, a common vision was developed. This saw communities, private and public sector come together to work for the common good of the environment and the people in the basin. These challenges informed development of the Sustainable Development Action Plan to address several issues, from which the Integrated Water Resource Action Plan program was conceptualized. We were bringing together the private sector, the public sector, the people together, and having a common holistic approach on how we can have integrated water resource management. IRAP was a four-year multi-partner program supported by the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Nairobi. Its objective was to create essential enabling conditions for effective water regulation and governance, sustainable natural resource use and development in the Lake Naivasha Basin. Economic development is important for us, for the horticulture, for the flower growers uh, around but also sustainable development. So that's why when WWF came, we agreed to, uh, to go along with it. One of the enhancement areas identified was to capacity build Imarisha Naivasha to execute its coordination mandate in the basin more effectively. Imarisha is a PPP. It's very unique in the sense that it also brings together the community the partnership also have helped us to ensure that uh, resources that are held within uh, the Lake Naivasha Basin can be used in a more of a synergy manner to resolve most of the challenges that we have. IRAP's scope covered fresh water, forests and climate change. For an assured success in the freshwater component, it was critical to partner with the Water Resources Authority the Kenya government's freshwater regulator. One of the needs that IRAP uh, was addressing was the technical capacity of WARMA to be able to do the quantitative monitoring of the lake levels. And uh, we realized that uh, from the Netherlands, they had very good expertise. That is the ITC, NZV and HDSR. The three Dutch partners provided substantial technical and institutional support to the Water Resources Authority. My role has been to coordinate the uh, Dutch team that has participated in uh, IRAP and basically bringing together the knowledge that we have in terms of research, a university, a hydrological institute, and the water boards which are responsible for the management of water in the Netherlands and bring all that knowledge and try to manipulate that knowledge and transfer it in a way that employees in Kenya could actually exploit. They came in to give that capacity in terms of developing the models, developing the technology and out of that they've come up with the ERP Next, we have the Magices and for the models we have the surface water and the groundwater modeling. Ultimately, the Water Resources Authority increased its technical capacity and knowledge for water resource management and monitoring. In the groundwater and the surface water monitoring, we have got equipment which they have installed in these rivers. 
Instead of us going to read them manually, we can get the information using our either your laptop or even the desktop. By the in incorporation of open source, it means that much more of the employees can actually operate on the information. There is more opportunities to generate new products, to do analysis of information. And of course, for the water users, the stakeholders, the flow of information goes much faster. At the institutional level, the Water Resources Authority improved its governance and relationship with the commercial water users and the 12 water resource users associations in the basin. Since I have started, we have capas build the communities so that we never they see anything to do with the pollution or water conflicts like during the dry season. They normally sit. If they cannot solve the problem, they can approach either us, even these other stakeholders we work with. Water Resource Users Associations, RUAs, are mandated by law to manage water at community level. IRAP supported them to understand and adopt the water resources management rules and the economic value of water. We have been involved uh, since uh, its uh, conception, its development until when it was uh, launched. So uh, we are happy because we own the program. The capacity has been built also within the community uh, to augment what WAMA is doing uh, in terms of water quality. So the communities have been monitoring the water quality. A key challenge identified by IRAP was catchment and riparian land degradation in the basin. This led to severe soil erosion and river pollution. To assure the quality and quantity of the basin's water resources, payment for Ecosystem Services Scheme, HES, was introduced. PES scheme is a market-based mechanism where landowners are rewarded by service beneficiaries. It is based on the premise that landowners undertake land use transformations that provide agreed ecosystem services. For these, landowners are rewarded financially by the beneficiaries. <laughs> The <laughs> We recognize that conservation is important, the conservation of Lake Naivasha is important to our existence. So it was just part of our way to say, you know, we need to be part of this conservation agenda because we rely very heavily on Lake Naivasha. As a result of PES, the flower farming sector is a frontline beneficiary from improved water flows. The sector has championed the development as well as adoption of national watershed standards and certification protocols. This um, engagement has helped us to add value to our code of practice. It has helped us to build capacity within ourselves in terms of determining footprints. There are very many times that you need to demonstrate what it is that you are advocating for or what it is that you're lobbying for. Now with scientifically derived tools like these, it reduces the amount of explanations that you have to go into and gives you indices that are very easy to communicate. To maintain basin water flows, IRAP also had to address the degraded catchment areas. This was through the Plantation Establishment for Livelihood Improvement Scheme, PELIS. In partnership with the Kenya Forest Service, community forest associations and ruas became key partners in participatory forest management to restore 701 hectares of degraded forest area. This has been a big success in Geta Forest because the backlog by then was about uh, 800 uh, hectares and has already been planted, the whole of it. And actually what we are planting right now is the new areas which are being harvested. The other benefit which we have seen so far is uh, the rehabilitation of the catchment areas. So all the rivers which go to Lake Naivasha, at least 60% has been rehabilitated. When the community were involved and they started cultivating, that is when the trees survived. Because of the fertilizer and the manure, 
they were using to plant their crops. The trees did well and that is why they have survived. We have planted that 3,000 tree seedlings. So it is through cultivation that the trees have survived. Inasmuch as Pellis addressed increasing the forest cover, fuel wood consumption still posed a threat. Communities still needed access to the forest to meet their energy requirements. Situations that presented challenges to many households. Ukichukua ile siku naenda huko msituni na kubeba ile msiko wa kuni kuleta mpaka nyumbani. Hiyo inachukua kama siku mzima. Tena kule msituni kuna ile pesa ambayo wanakata huko. To entrench forest conservation and reduce pressure on the forests, IRAP introduced energy efficient technologies through improved cook stoves. This helped to balance human needs for fuel wood with sustainable forest management. After kupata jiko kisasa tunatumia muda mfupi kupika. Haina moshi. Tulikuwa tunaendea mizigo kama mbili kwa wiki. Sasa tunaendea mzigo kama moja tunatumia kwa wiki mbili. Above addressing energy issues, climate change posed another major challenge to communities in the dry parts of the lower catchment. IRAP instituted climate change mitigation for smallholder farmers to enhance their efficient water use through water pan storage and drip irrigation. Kupitia usaidizi wa WWF, tumenalimaka greenhouse, tunalima nyanya. Na nyanya ziko na soko sana. Na pia huwa tunalima mahindi na maharagwe. Namboga, skuma, tunamatunda, na pia hata tunafuga kuku na ngombe, na hata nyuki tukonazo. Tangu WWF ingia hapa, hatujawa ilala nja hata siku moja. Moreover, IRAP empowered community members to adapt to the adverse effects of climate change. This was through diversified farming methods. Over the four years, IRAP has been a proven success in public-private people partnerships. Taking a landscape approach to water resources management is critical, especially in an area that is as complex as the Lake Naivasha Basin. Kenya is a water scarce country, and therefore how do we work with partners using an integrated approach to actually promote sustainable management of the scarce freshwater resources? The program was actually also delivering towards our global strategy on management of fresh water resources in the major basins in the world. It has actually become very evident that sustainable fresh water management requires an integrated multi-sectoral interagency and a multidisciplinary approach. A partnership program such as IRAP yields value addition beyond the planned collaboration. Each partner draws on their networks to bring more expertise and added diversity. The multi-stakeholder approach has been very good because multi-stakeholders have multi-problems, have multi-questions, and these have all been combined in one project. And I think that we need to be smart also when this program has ended to make use of existing networks to build new ones. One of the biggest next level is building capacities of communities through their CSOs, whether the RUAs or the CFAs, to be able to articulate these issues and, you know, capacity build them to amplify the citizen voice and action. And they are able to act in a knowledgeable way. We must build on the momentum uh, that has been generated. The ball cannot be dropped now. But I must say that IRAP has played a very important role of creating a very solid foundation on which our future initiatives can build on. As a county government of Nakuru, we want to say, we want to replicate the efforts that they have done because we have seen this a fruit actually in other areas. We have important lakes like Nakuru, we have Elementaita, which requires a lot of attention in terms of conservation. We need to protect them. As an exit strategy, IRAP aims to establish the Sustainable Development Trust Fund. The vision for the fund is to generate as well as provide a continuous funding stream to support the conservation and the future survival of the Lake Naivasha Basin. A sustainable development fund that provides a kitty where any good willing or any development partner who is willing to work with us can put in money here and these resources can be used 
within the Lake Naivasha Basin. IRAP has contributed to the mission or has lived the mission of WWF, living with harmony with nature. We have been able to integrate people and conservation. We've been able to show communities the importance of nature and how to live with it well. Because nature is also very unforgiving. So one thing we have done is to show that symbiotic relationship that cannot be ignored.